Hello again, my friends. Welcome back to the Minecraft Vegan Survival Experience. Today, we are making things happen again. We are upgrading. We are making things easier. We are future-proofing. That's right. There's going to be a future in this world, and we are going to be prepared for it. First, some cleaning. I'm changing the rules a little bit here. We are no longer taking bones from skeletons. That's done. If I pick up a bone from a skeleton, it gets dropped, it's gone, poof, it never existed. These bones were from skeletons. They are now garbage. Fiery garbage. If you enjoy fiery garbage, hit that red hot blue like button for me. So how can I do that? Well, here's how. The composter. That's right. Today we are future-proofing all of our bone meal needs with one of these beautiful wooden boxes. Or several of these. We'll see how it goes. For those of you who don't know, bones can be broken down into bone meal. Bone meal is a useful item in the game because it can be used to grow crops, trees, plants, and flowers. It's basically fertilizer. Let's call it fertilizer from now on. <clears throat> Vegan world. In the future, I want to set up some automatic crop farms in this world, so we need a surplus of bone meal, or um, fertilizer. So what's a vegan-friendly way of getting fertilizer? The composter. That's right. In the not future, but the present in fact, we are going to set up an automatic bone meal fertilizer farm. It is a simple farm, doesn't even require any redstone, but it's a clever little farm. The best thing, we just have to set it and forget it. Lately, I've been really excited with the prospect of an underground or a cave base. I don't know if that's really the way we're going to go full time, but for now, this farm, it's going to work underground. So I think what we're going to do is dig out this room a little further back. For this farm, technically we only need an 11 by 11 space, but I might dig out a little bit more so we have some more room to walk around. I also need to go a few blocks down, so I'm going to build it up a couple of blocks as well. We're already down at Y11, I don't want to get that disgusting bedrock texture in our way. I gotta say, having this diamond pick enchanted with efficiency is absolutely amazing. This stone is... No match for the speed and efficiency of this brand new tool. I seriously can't believe I was using iron picks for so long. Hey, you want to see me dig out a square very efficiently? Of course you do. Here goes. I guess I should grab these ores while we're down here. I haven't found any diamonds yet, but there sure is a lot of coal and redstone. So here's a bit of a problem. This room comes right out to one of our mineshaft access hallways. I do want the builds to be close and kind of connected, but still a little separate. Eventually I plan on maybe linking up some of them, but for now I want to keep a few blocks of space between them. So what we're doing here is a pretty standard cactus farm with a grid of 64 cacti. Uh, the holes... These holes in the ground are reference points to where water is going to push the cacti down to this collection level. This water collection level will then funnel the cacti into a hopper to be collected. These cobblestone walls represent where the collection area is going to be. Which will then need to be funneled down into the hopper. So we'll dig a trench out this way a few blocks. Now we have to go up and start digging out the level for the actual farm. We need this to be at least 18 blocks wide to fit our cactus farm, but this is still going to take a while even with the awesome pickaxe. Alright, it's mostly dug out up there. Here's how the collection level works. Super simple. Water in these four corners, it flows just enough to push the cacti into the middle hole. Back up on the second level, you'll notice these holes again for the cacti to fall through. But cactus only grows on sand, so we need to put some sand blocks in here. Space two blocks apart so they can grow freely without touching any other blocks. So here's what we should have, our 8x8 sand blocks ready to go. Now for the super simple automatic part of this. When a cactus grows and it touches something, it breaks and falls to the ground. The resulting broken piece is what we're going to be harvesting. So to get the cactus to break, we are going to use these fence posts in line with the sand blocks, two blocks higher up. When a cactus grows, the second block attaches to the fence post and breaks off. We only need them every other block, right beside the sand blocks actually. When cactus grow in the row to my left or right, they'll touch one of these fence posts. That means two rows of cactus can use those posts. So we can skip one row of posts and move to the next. 
Time to finish up the water collection system. Cactus funnel into this hole and will flow to another water stream down this trench. We'll put a water block there and let's test it. Yep, made it down, perfect. Now we just need to have something to catch them at the end. Put a chest in there, boom. Put a hopper on top, yes, yes. Now we gotta surround the hopper so nothing bounces out. Always with the zombies in my videos, jeez guys. I started putting water in the water collection upstairs and got really tired of running between levels, so now I've made an access stairway between levels, lovely. Now we want cacti on every single block of sand in here. This is what my temporary mineshaft roadblock cactus farm thing was all about last episode. Okay, the water flowing system, very important. Water sources in each of the four corners and the middle of each edge, if that makes sense. Or between cactus number four and five counting from one side. Yes. With this setup, your water should, should flow to the holes we made but not through them. So if we refill these, get back up there and look, yes, between four and five, that should work. Okay, last bucket, let's have a look. Okay, looks good, looks good. Blowing to the holes, but not in them, perfect. Toss some stone in for a test, and yep, down it goes, yeah. And yes, it made it to the chest, awesome. That's technically a fully functioning farm right there, my friends. I'm gonna let this run without a composter, just collecting cactus for a bit, because I have another bit of a plan here. The best part about this farm, aside from how simple it is, is that you can make it bigger. Much bigger. What the heck is up there? Great, we have another hole. I don't want any more creeper feet in this series. That was a disaster. So we have a tunnel and, oh, this leads to one of the abandoned mine shafts. That's perfect. If we decide to keep the underground base, eventually we should integrate these hallways into it somehow. There's certainly enough of them and they're already dug out, so that just makes a lot more sense. Moving along, I'm extending the staircase upwards because I want a second level of this farm. More levels equals more cactus, more faster. I like more faster. Do you like more faster? Let's see how more faster we are right now. We've got how many? 24. Not bad. Could be better. Up on the second level. Gonna be exactly the same as the first level. Exactly the same and exactly right above. Each layer of this farm is going to be exactly right above the previous, so all the funneling holes match up and actually funnel down. The last thing we want is broken cacti falling onto other cacti that are growing and getting destroyed. Excuse me while I go dig another giant hole. This one apparently is going to open up to a mine shaft. That's cool, we can make it work. Just like before, Sand on every other block, ending up with eight in each row. So we have the cacti planted. Now it's time for our fence blocks. And this looks strange, but we're right in the middle of a mineshaft hallway. When you put your water in, don't do this. This is not correct. This is me not paying enough attention. Don't be like me. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Why and how are you in the ocean? The how? I finished that section of the farm and I grabbed the boat. Pretty simple, really. The why? Well, coming up. Yes, right there. That's the savanna biome. That's why. Acacia trees. Acacia wood. That's why I'm here. Acacia wood is orange. Acacia wood is the most carrot-like wood in the game. That means I must have it. I must have lots of it. Seriously though, it is an awesome orange color and I do want to use it for the hallways. The main reason we're here though is for these little guys right here. Saplings. I'm going to collect some of these saplings, bring them back to the base, and grow them ourselves so we can have our own steady supply of the wood. 
I'm also gonna replant every tree I chop down here because that's the vegan way. Kapow! Right over here. Wha bam! Over there. Just like that. All right, it's details time. I've done a couple of things over here. Added the lovely moldy stairs going to the chest and this glass casing around the water collection area just in case we want to watch the cactus fall. It's a little more interesting. You know what, maybe I can make that a thing. Minecraft, relaxing ambiance, watching cacti fall. We can also see through the floor up here, kinda neat. So we've collected almost four and a half stacks so far. Not bad considering it's just been built. These other items just got caught in the water while I was building and they landed here. Now that we have a few stacks of cactus, it's time to add the composter. All we have to do is move the chest down, put a composter between the chest and add another hopper. Boom, there it is. Now the cacti go into the hopper, get composted and come out as fertilizer in the chest. Beautiful. A vegan friendly way to get that bone meal fertilizer. Oh yeah. Also, this is a great way to get rid of our extra wheat seeds that we've been getting just from harvesting the wheat for our bread. The last thing I want to do this episode is kind of get a theme going for our hallways here. I've got acacia planks for a walkway and the grass will grow on either side keeping the orange and green aesthetic. I think I'll stick with oak for the posts for now. I might have to fiddle with that a little bit later. Yeah, we'll work on that. Okay, guess I have to work on some lighting up there. We meet again, Creeper Feet. You will not win this round. You will not. And that's it for episode 8. We have successfully started the future for this world. Automatic crop and flower farms can now have a steady supply of fertilizer. That is fantastic. I'm really excited about that. I may also make this farm a few levels higher up later on. Not sure yet. One last reminder, if you do like this series, consider doing these three things for me. It does really help. But for now, I'm just going to sit here and watch my wheat seeds disappear and become something useful. Ah, it's wonderful. Thanks for joining me in this future-friendly episode. I'm your favorite carrot, the casual one. And I really hope you join me in the next one. Bye!